the new Godzilla anime on Netflix is now out, and it's been out for a while, so I'm going to do a little bit of a spoiler review for it. And don't worry, it is much better than the anime trilogy that Netflix also produced. I think the reason why this one is a lot better than the anime trilogy is because it kind of does the same thing as the trilogy, but it actually succeeds in what it's trying to accomplish. With the anime trilogy, it was trying to have all these new ideas for these kind of established characters or creatures and mythos behind them. The problem is, is it didn't really deliver on these ideas. Versus now, with the new Netflix series, it introduces these new ideas for these old creatures and concepts, but it actually succeeds on what it's trying to do. And I think that's the primary reason on why this one succeeds, whereas the anime one failed. It even does suffer from some of the same problems. They both don't have very good characters. I at least remember the designs of the one from the new, this new Netflix series, versus the old one. I cannot remember any of the designs. No, uh, the only character that I really liked was the little crazy dude, the engineer boss, how he kind of like invented Jet Jaguar. I don't remember his name, so still not that good of a character. The little doge computer bit emoji thing was pretty annoying. It wasn't like levels of go die in a hole now or I'm gonna rip off my ears because you're so annoying. It was more of a roll my eyes and just groan every time it was on the screen. The animation was pretty great. I mean, it's not surprising. These are the same people that do My Hero Academia, which is also a great anime, which I just got into and recommend watching. My biggest issue with this series is that it's a very science heavy series and that I found it very hard to understand in some areas. Overall I kind of got the general plot of what's going on, on how these monsters are appearing and no one really knows why and that there's this connection to the dust but some of the technicals and specifics of it confuse me. Maybe I'm just like super dumb but I don't know. I feel like I've heard other people say that in some areas it's really smart and it's kind of hard to understand it because it's using all this science babble mambo jumbo uh, there are tons of old references not just not including kaiju just to the other movies like the whole twin fairy singing on the radio that was pretty cool to see a reference like that back in this uh, series under the original company that made it action was pretty awesome and now I think I'll just kind of talk about the little Toho monsters that were in it because a lot of the Toho monsters that came back in this were ones that we haven't seen in these reboots or in recent movies even by Toho. There's no Ghidorah, so that's kind of a nice thing, especially since he's shown so much. Uh, the first one we got the Megalon and Hedora hybrid bugs. That was pretty cool to see these two Toho monsters fused together. Kind of remind me of like crabs and octopus relationship. Just like the design of both, so I thought that was pretty neat. Uh, Manda was pretty cool. Kind of the idea that it's this giant sea monster. But then I also like the plot twist that there's like a whole bunch of them, but they're actually being like hunted, kind of like dolphins running away from a giant orca, and that giant orca being Titanosaurus, which is actually just the first evolution stage of Godzilla. Anguirus was pretty cool. I like the action scene between him and Jet Jaguar in the ability of, to shift his spikes and predict the future. I think that was definitely interesting and I actually like this design of Anguirus a lot more than the original traditional one. I think this one kind of fits the more Ankylosaurus design that Anguirus is very based off of. Uh, Gabara, considering that is probably one of the least favorite monsters in the franchise and now he's back having a pretty major role in I think he was pretty cool in the way that they would stop him by crystallizing the red gas and he would like shish kebab him like in all parts of the body. That was pretty cool to see this monster that was pretty well hated for pretty good reasons, especially the poor design, come back with at least with at least a much more solid design. And then we'll kind of get down to the big three Kai Toho property characters that were the main focus. First one being the Rodan Flock. They're the most common kaiju that you see in this series. I think you actually, they're the ones that take up the most screen time. But it's cool to kind of see that it's not this giant pterodactyl, where as opposed to instead it's like a whole flock of these pterodactyls. And I kind of like how the culture of Japan, once the first one was dead, that they started merchandising it and stuff. Kind of reminded me of the opening Pacific Rim, where it shows like the pilots and the robots and the kaiju became toys similar to this. At one point, you see like a little Rodan plushie that's for sale. So. I think that's kind of neat and very in something that would definitely happen in the real world today. If there was a monster, of course it would be merchandised and made into 
toys and collectibles and etc. And now, good old Jet Jaguar. Jet Jaguar is probably the most complicated one to talk about, just because it kind of has two different stages. The first one is basic robot mech suit, as it's being piloted usually by the small crazy inventor guy as I previously mentioned. And then the second stage is when he's, or it's, now being controlled by the little doge AI, and so it kind of has a much different personality from there. And then the plot twist of them sending the AI back to the few, back to the past, and it takes over Jet Jaguar but makes it into a giant robot. If that sounds complicated, it's way more complicated than that and I don't really fully understand it and that's kind of what I mean by it's super complicated in some areas. And now we'll get to the big G himself, Godzilla. I like how even that the first two stages of Godzilla, the first evolutions, they're just old Toho monsters. The first one being Titanosaurus, although greatly redesigned, which is already kind of like an aquatic version of Godzilla. And then the second one being Varon, which is a bit which is a very, very old Toho movie, where it's kind of like a giant uh, sugar glider, but it's a lizard, so. And he made a brief cameo within Destroy All Monsters, so it's kind of cool to see even old monsters that don't necessarily have their own identity still being incorporated into this new anime. And then Godzilla's final design. This one is probably the chunkiest Godzilla design ever. I feel like every time a new Godzilla comes out, they're trying to make him chonkier and chonkier. Not that I'm complaining, I still think it's a pretty cool design. I like how he's got the super wide gulper, gulper eel mouth. And I like the design so much that I actually pre-ordered the SMH monster art figure, which I'm looking forward to that, especially with it having like an 18 inch long tail. But even the design of this one kind of reminded me of the anime now the anime, the previous anime Netflix Godzilla, with them both being incredibly thick, as well as the way they charge up their atomic breath, it looks very similar to me. So, in a way, these Netflix animes, they're both very similar on some act respects, but the thing is with the new one, it actually succeeds in what it's trying to accomplish. Uh, as for recommending this to people, I would say if you're a longtime Godzilla fan who's familiar with lots of the movies, I definitely recommend it. Whereas newcomers, I think it's a very science-heavy, dialogue-heavy series that might be confusing and kind of overwhelm someone. So I would recommend that starting off with something less in your face in terms of starting off with a Godzilla property. Because you otherwise, newcomers are not going to be able to understand or recognize all these little easter eggs that Godzilla fans will recognize and appreciate. And that's pretty much all I have to say about this series, so I hope you enjoy it. And I'm kind of curious on what everyone else thought about it, whether it's too science-y or not. Alright, take care.